What is up my friends and how's it going and welcome back to the third episode of our live stream as Mithridates the sixth. With your fellow comrade Summary, we are playing as Mithridates uh, the sixth in the new Mithridatic uh, war campaign of Divide et Impera. However, in the previous episode, just to quickly summarize what we have achieved, uh, we managed to complete the conquest of Asia, Galatia, Cappadocia, uh, thereby securing the entire province of uh, Anatolia. Meanwhile, we launched a naval invasion of uh, Nosos as well, or Hierapetna. And now our army, although it is slightly depleted, it is, is near Sparta and will in the next turn be able to attack Sparta. Meanwhile, we have moved our faction oh leader eyes, Mithridates himself into uh, Thracia. And we have conquered the settlement of Anthea. However, without any further ado, we are pretty much done for this turn. By the looks of it. And, uh... Quick look at our politics. Everything seems to be fine. Let's go ahead, end the turn. And, uh... Alright, so the objective of this uh, episode would be to, you know, slowly conquer... Uh you know, the Roman-held territories in Hellas itself. And uh, hopefully we will be able to do that in this episode. And what I'm actually going to do in this episode is I'm actually going to let you guys decide if I should, uh, you know, continue after I defeat... Uh, after I defeat Solani in, in Greece, or if I should just, you know, call it... Uh, you know, call it a day with the live stream of Mithridates. I have, I feel I have showcased the new campaign to a fairly good degree. So it's, it's really up to you guys as the viewer if you'd like to see me, you know, take this campaign all the way um, and uh, perhaps even conquer Roma itself or at least conquer Roma and then call it a day instead of conquering the entirety of the Roman Republic, which extends all the way to Hispania, actually. Um, and then perhaps, perhaps we can, after that, we can, you know, look at some other options. Maybe we could, uh, in the next week or the next couple of weeks when I am free, we could start uh, live streaming maybe something else of uh, Divide Tempera, maybe another faction, perhaps, of the Grand Campaign. Trade agreement is dissolved with the Seleucids and this means that Armenia has completed the conquest of uh, Seleucia. And of course Seleucia does still exist as a single army over there but they will not exist for far too long. Meanwhile Armenia has been a thorn in our side. They are treacherous and now they are quite massive so we kind of have to watch out for them. Uh, over here, we are in the process of recruiting some troops. However, we don't have enough money to do so. And uh, what do we have here? Now we could backstab these guys. I mean, there's never been a better moment to do so. And uh, by doing that, we will be able to... We'll be able to get rid of the faction. So let's actually go ahead and declare that war. Okay, and they are going to fight it, so actually let us uh, switch off the control large armies, hop right into a battle, and uh, we can begin the episode with a massive battle. Alright, this is the first time we will actually get to use uh, my Syrian, uh, you know, Syrian war elephants in an open field, I believe, as far as this uh, live stream is concerned. So, definitely uh, excited for that. Let's go ahead and start our deployment. Quickly change our presets. Okay, there we go to... Uh, okay, left and right flanks. You're looking fine. Get these guys over there. And, of course, we also have access now to the... Um, Mm, okay, there we go. We also have access to these Galatian uh, warriors. Quite 
nice looking unit. Let's have a quick look at them. These are AOR units and for those of you who have seen my uh, Spartan army guide and I intend to release more guides, these guys are actually amazingly good. As you can see their melee attack is 17, melee defense is 16, their armor is at a whopping 40 right and they have a 32 weapon damage plus one bonus versus infantry and a speed of three these guys are actually even in my opinion better than roman legionaries themselves so definitely uh you know worthy aor unit and should be using them if you aren't in your campaigns i would highly recommend them let's go ahead and deploy our cavalry get our archers and as you can see we haven't yet uh you know finalized our formation and the reason being that there is a ugly hill right here in front of us so we are going to try to and whenever you see a hill like this it is best to just you know keep your formation as loose as possible so that uh, you know they can easily form up Tapendra, Tapendra Shahi welcome welcome to the stream glad to have you with us uh, Christoph Becker, glad to have you with us as well. I don't know if it is a mistake, but in the title there is two. Yes, that is definitely a mistake. Thank you for pointing that out. Uh, we'll change that after the uh, live stream. That does tend to happen a lot with me because I actually copy paste uh, the details of the title. So if I forget to change that, that's kind of what happens. Meanwhile, over here, let's have a quick look at what they have. They have Peltaste. Peltaste are quite deadly against Phalanx type units, so we gotta be a little bit careful. Thankfully, we have Scythians. And we are gonna move our Scythians up ahead. Quickly get these guys. Group 7 as well. Over there. Now we can kind of form up our main line. And by the looks of it, it doesn't seem the enemy is. Too, too far out so we could actually just no we need to be quick about this now now that they are charging towards us and uh, what do we have here we have some missile cavalry which is not is not ideal definitely because we want to be able to engage them let's move our cavalry up a little bit closer and we are going to move our archers in behind this again it's not looking too good because of course their peltaste units are going to be able to hurl a lot into our pike units so we should be taking a bit of casualties as a result of that let's move our cavalry on the left flank into position once again i'm not really sure what the enemy is attempting to do over here they are Peltaste units trying to get to my elephant units. And Peltastes can really hurt elephant units. So let's get our elephants behind. Have a quick look of what's going on over here. That's fantastic. We can put these guys in that defensive formation. Get these guys a little bit more forward, pull these guys behind. The Pedotians took a bit of casualty from there. However, it's going to be tough to catch up to these guys. These Capadocians are taking some serious, serious damage. And they have way too many Peltas actually. Which is a very good and solid counter to Pikemen, if, in case you guys are wondering. But uh, let's not be passive anymore because we can't just afford to sit here and let the Peltas stay, you know, use all of their ammunition on me. So we are going to move up our troops ever so slowly. What do we have here? We have some anti-cavalry traps over there and I really hate traps. Don't really like them. We need to just get rid of this jav cav. That's that's what's keeping us behind. So let's focus our archers to hit those jav calves as much as we can. Fast forward a bit over here. And this is the problem with Peltaste units. It can just cause so much damage to phalanx 
phalangite units. Speaking of phalangite units, let's actually spread out our phalangite. Go ahead, boss over there. You can hit here, here. Keep moving forward. One of our units has used all its ammunition. Okay, we are going to try to surround this enemy cavalry unit so, so that we can take it out of the fight. Meanwhile, over here on the right flank, get our phalangite to keep pushing forward. Elephants, come on. Okay. Relations over here, charge into the fray. The cavalry around, meanwhile on that side. Elephants have managed to come around, which is good. It means we can get into the backs of the units, which is what we want. We're going to get our cavalry also around over there. Meanwhile, our archers doing a good job against this cavalry unit actually. Which means soon enough just move our elephants a bit close to give them a bit more morale damage One of our units has used all its ammunition. we're gonna completely ignore we're gonna completely ignore these units because they are in the fire and we don't want our elephants to go there what we are gonna do is charge our elephants into the backs of these units and they should do quite well against these units actually wonderful Meanwhile, the elephants over here have also done pretty well. Go ahead, charge our cavalry. Charge the elephants into the backs over here. Yep. And with that, the elephants have wiped out the left flank. Let's quickly move them on to roll down the enemy lines. We're going to use our Galatians to keep chasing the enemy as much as we can. Elephants in the center do manage to get charged. Let's see if we can hit this unit. It's going to retreat, maybe, because it is a jab unit. We're going to move our elephants around instead of rolling down that left flank. And the reason being is that we actually want to... B Company, hello, welcome, welcome to the stream. The reason is we actually want to get rid of this extreme left flank so that we can pull in our Galatian warriors. And let's have a quick look at these stats of these Galatians. 92, pretty respectable. However, I expected a lot better. And uh, it would be a lot better, maybe. Just have to see how it goes. Well, elephants over here are doing quite good. I'm going to pull them a bit behind. And we're going to have to try to trap this cavalry. Get our elephants around. Whoa, these elephants took significant amount of damage. What are these guys? Oh, these are Rome Fire. I didn't see that. These guys are really good against elephants. However, it is good news that our Syrian elephants are rather coming from the foreign population class, so we shouldn't you know we shouldn't suffer too much for that. Let's uh, keep attacking over here. Move our general closer. Mithridates himself using a Sarmatian guard. There he is. Let him inspire the troops. I mean, it's about time he does that. Hey, the Galatians can continue their charge over there. We can pull back meanwhile. Defense pull back completely defeated the enemy right flank as well so we can pull our warriors back into the fray quickly group up our elephants together go ahead charge here cavalry can charge here and the Galatian warriors you're doing quite well let's go ahead and charge our regular legionary type units into the backs of the enemy over there. Quick look. Johnny OK, hey, good afternoon. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Hope you're doing well. 
And of course, some big damage over there. I have to watch out for these Thracians, and uh, that was a good lesson actually. And a good reminder that just how powerful they can be. Quick look at our Galatians, and as you can see now, they are starting to rack up the kills. What I could do over here is put this guy over here, get this guy onto the flanks. Alright, Elephants are doing a good job over here. Wiping out that center. Wonderful. Go ahead, charge into these units. These guys can perhaps end up getting 200 kills. If they can charge the enemy in the backs. We want to keep that narrow formation. No, don't get entangled in there. Okay, meanwhile, Elephants are doing great. Keep chasing this unit so that you move uh, far enough. A horseman can chase. This unit can come here by the flank around. Peter Farkas, hello. Hello, welcome to the stream. Glad to have you with us. Go ahead, realign our elephants. Gonna charge into the backs of these units. Okay, not a very... Okay, it's pretty decent charge. I mean, elephants just have so much mass, you don't have to perfectly time your charge. Meanwhile, these units can go ahead, get into the fighting. And uh, you should see them rack up a lot of kills now, because when they flank, they will get quite a lot of damage. So, this is the importance of flanking. You will see 188, 189, it's just gonna go insane now. 195 and with that the battle is over we are going to go ahead end the battle and uh, continue with our campaign hopefully we haven't really wiped out this army however so guys comment down in the uh, chat what are you guys up to these days and what faction are you playing as and how's your how are your campaigns going? And if you have any questions, any doubts, I'm more than happy to help if I can. And uh, I think it's, uh, I have been trying out some campaigns with the nomadic factions. Quite interesting, actually. Very different playstyle. Uh, let's go ahead and enslave the captives. Alright, what are we looking at over here? Mercenary wise. You can get access to two more mercs. And uh, in terms of garrison, looking quite decent actually. So I'm happy just abandoning that. I didn't manage to kill uh, their king. Slowly moving our dignitary into the province of Macedonia as well. Have a quick look at what exactly is going on. We have another dignitary over here that we can keep moving. I mean, attacking Sparta is a little bit risky, but we are going to go ahead and do it. They have a pretty massive army. And over here, now I could attack this army and defeat it once and for all. However, if I do attack Odessos instead... Hmm... You know what? Let us actually uh, go ahead and fight this one. And uh, before that, let us actually conquer Sparta. Alright, the sally out, which is exactly what we want. We want enemies to sally out to fight in the open fields, because that's the strength of, uh, of course, our armies. It's, uh, it's more catered towards open battlefields than it is towards closed battlefields, so... Definitely want to have as many battles in the open. We're going to go ahead and quickly assign our armies. Okay, get this guy here. Push these guys up here. They're going to have the hill, unfortunately. But, uh... We don't really care about that. We're still going to win this battle. It's a pretty easy battle against the garrison. And uh, 
weapons on the left flank. Do they have uh, cavalry? I believe they should have cavalry units. Get a general here. Archers. Elephants on the right flank. Finally a cavalry on the right flank. Go ahead and start the battle. Just move up our army ever so slowly. And then have a quick look at the chat. I see myself getting bogged down in western Turkey around Pergamon and the port city below it in the Mithridates campaign. Are you playing as Mithridates himself? And if you are getting bogged down in Asia, West Turkey around Pergamon and the port city below it. Uh, honestly, they have made quite a few changes to the campaign, so the modifiers might be slightly different for the one that I am playing right now, and it might be easier actually for the one I am playing. So, yeah, there could be uh, that issue as well. These guys have pretty, pretty respectable troops, really. And, uh, okay, they are running into position, so let's quickly get ourselves into position. And the good thing is they don't have a javelin cap, which means we should be able to do our double charge trick over here. So let's have a quick look at that. And, uh, gonna get a massive charge. Elephants to break their charge. And then our own Cappadocian Lancers to follow that up. Of course, and they are using Slingers against us. The Cappadocian Lancers should do actually pretty decisively over here. Let's get that out of the way. Meanwhile, we are going to select the entire remainder of the army. And move them up ahead. And there is a bit of a hindrance over there. We're going to pull back over here. Pull our cavalry as well behind and this is the problem with a phalanx type units is that you can easily find yourselves in a situation like this where you have a bit of a you know topographical setback but the only way you're gonna have to deal with that is kind of move your armies around as best as you can And uh, pretty much in real life, this is what uh, the Romans actually exploited about uh, phalanx units. Well, let's go ahead and move our cavalry onto that left flank. I would I would recommend to try your level best in in the sense that you know, um, like I, you have seen my campaign, you've seen the way I have uh, approached it. So I would recommend you know trying your level best to. Try to mimic that as best as you can, but more importantly, um, make sure that when you're attacking, especially wall settlements, that you are uh, in a much better position because you can take quite a lot of casualties from wall settlements if you're not too careful. Uh, we really need uh, these guys to engage. We want our front lines to engage, however, it seem all too content to just stay in, pl in place. While elephants can go ahead charge over here, we can follow that up with our cavalry charge. And now our Galatians are actually going to do much better in this battle because they are going to get the opportunity blank. And that is actually what we wanted. And uh, over here, meanwhile, I'm going to get... I'm going to get Mithridates, or sorry, not Mithridates, the other general up ahead. Wonderful. Group 5, go ahead, keep chasing over there. Group 3, you can keep chasing. The elephants can keep hitting over here. Meanwhile, uh, this cavalry unit can hit there. And now we are going to use our Galatian warriors, if we can. Elephants charging downhill. That's going to be quite devastating, actually. Going to be quite massive. Okay. Go ahead, use our Galatian warriors to charge over there. These guys get into an uphill position. where you can charge into those units. Meanwhile, elephants over here can come back and it seems like our pikemen are not really getting any action because, of course, uh, you know, the enemy is trying to avoid as much as possible our pikemen. We want to keep moving our elephants around, so this is a good target. And you don't want your elephants to stay in one place because they can, their main damage is actually charge damage. So you just want to keep moving them around as much as possible. And once they have reached there, just keep moving them. And apart from charge damage, they also, you know, do a significant moral, morale damage. So, let's have a look at that charge. The battle is going to end. 
And of course some friendly fire over there, but pretty simple battle. We took less casualties. That's exactly what we wanted. We had a army that was under our attrition. And, uh, you know, minimizing those casualties is exactly what you need in order to, you know, secure your foothold when you invade a continent. So right now I was invading, of course, the Peloponnese, um, invading Sparta. And of course, there is a Roman army right outside the settlement. So you really want to minimize your casualties. And one thing you can do is sacrifice your foreign troops because they can replenish regardless. And what you want to do is conserve your citizens. However, of course, our citizens did take some attritions on the sea. Uh, but we're not going to care for that too much now. We don't want to... I mean, ideally, I would recommend looting uh, Sparta. Because it is a Latin culture. And you know what? Maybe I am going to go ahead and loot it. I mean, why not? Uh, I think Mithridates himself actually, when he took over Greek settlements, he kind of looted it himself or like sacked it because he kind of got rid of the Roman population within those settlements so that there wouldn't be any Roman uh, sympathizers. Meanwhile, we can have a quick look at our provinces before we go ahead and we have to upgrade these settlements for sure. And uh, meanwhile, okay. Get this built up. Okay, Mithridates himself is a bit of trouble. Move our fleet slightly behind. And uh, go ahead and disband all of these units. We don't need them anymore. They're just costing us extra gold. And uh, we're going to have to fight this one, I think. I think so, I think so. Who the hell is this guy and what is he doing there actually? I have no idea. Hmm. Is he part of our family? Can't really see him. Damascus, okay. Let's have a look. What are we looking at? Damascus, okay. He's a general. And uh, not quite sure what he's all about. He gives extra public order. And... Uh, Still forgot that we have this faction over here that still exists and I'm not entirely sure if attacking you know what let's be a little bit more patient with these guys over here instead we push back down south get rid of this army should be quite easy auto resolve go ahead and slave all of them and uh, we can put Mithridates back in here and he should be able to replenish to full strength in a couple of turns which is much better than attacking unprepared for most of you who have seen my let's play series you'll know that i'm a very cautious player i like to play a little bit cautiously and i and i definitely recommend that for anyone who is trying to get a grip on the game it's just rushing in there without actually thinking can you know put you at some major setbacks have you ever thought about using a building icon mod? There's one for DEI that I like a lot. Honestly, I do like the building icon mod, but uh, at the same time, it's very confusing. Um, what I like about the base uh, Divided Emperor icons is that they are so easy to understand because each of them have a hierarchical uh, sort of a theme to it you know like if you are building ports and then all the four levels of ports have the exact same icon it's just the the roman numerals alongside those icons that improve so definitely uh, i like the base game uh, divide tempera icons uh, although of course i wish it was you know a bit more picturesque like the one uh, the sub mod you're talking about um but the downside of the sub mod that you're talking about and like full respect to the author he's done a fantastic job in my opinion the downside is that it's a little bit tough to understand the chain the building chain when you have so many different icons that being said i could actually you know create a, a bit of both i could actually use his mod and create a mod that uh, follows that line of thought where 
you know, I could use his icons, but I could maintain them for several building chains. Uh, but however, I have to get a hold of him. Are you planning later to betray the Mariani? Yes, I might be. I mean, it all depends on you guys as to how long I continue this series. And, uh, okay, let's, uh, we can do nothing. Don't need to spend money on that. We need money right now. And of course, we need to improve our economy as well. Go ahead, get the Shrine of Hermes. Now, just have a quick look at the income we are making in Asia. And it's, it is reaching that level where it is going to start to get a bit crazy. Let's go ahead, get this. Okay, I'm happy with that. And recruit some troops. The two Katoi Koi. Uh, we have our Cappadocians. What we need is uh, we don't need the Galatians. All out of Galatian warriors. I wonder where the Galatian Thorax warriors actually. And they might, might actually be available. Um, no, it doesn't seem like I can access those guys, unfortunately. I'm a bit sad about that actually. I was hoping that I would be able to access them. However, whatever it is, I am, I guess, it's not the end of the world. Let's just go ahead. Instead, maybe we can get the Pontic Thoracitae. Or we could go for the Galatian Swordsman. But I don't like the Thoracitae, the reason being uh, is that they have low weapon damage. Now, those of you who have watched my Spartan Army Guide, you will know that I place a lot of emphasis on weapon damage. Uh, these stats don't really mean that much, especially melee attack, melee defense, if your weapon damage is pathetic. And uh, anything below 30, I consider it to be pathetic. So I wouldn't even bother. Uh, unless, of course, there is some, you know, really interesting... Uh, interesting caveat to the unit itself as you can see over here the the reason why I would take the Pontic late infantry even though their overall uh, damage is 26 which is a weapon damage of 23 plus a melee armor penetration damage of 3 the reason I'm taking them is that they are very respectable with the 38 armor 13 melee attack 13 melee defense and they come from the third class population so they really punch about their weight is what I have noticed meanwhile over here Mithridates has nearly nearly Let's go ahead and see, you know what, why not attack this, because we want an open battle. We'll go ahead and attack this over here in the open battle. And uh, yeah, that should be actually good. Johnny Oak, oh yeah, in the religious branch, many of the icons are in repeat and it can be very confusing saying it with all respect of course yes exactly like you know i feel like uh you have a l way too many icons going on you know you have way too many icons and uh, i mean this is one of the things that actually i am concerned about with the roman series is that of course we're gonna have like 39 legionaries so n no small number of legionaries so we have to you know really see how you know it doesn't confuse the hell out of people it is going to be epic. It's going to be something I have never actually done before. Such a massive skill. And uh, let's just quickly go ahead and deploy our army real quick. And... Uh, oh my god. Okay, get these guys up here. I'm really liking this oblique order, uh, you know, tactic that I have uh, recently myself stumbled upon. And of course I shared it with you guys in my Spartan army guide. Um, but the reason I like it is that it's just so powerful in uh, preserving your troops. I mean, your phalangites will not get a lot of the action. However, whatever action they do get, they are, they are well equipped to deal with it. Uh, but at the same time, of course, um, you know, you are you are using up your other units a lot more. I definitely would recommend that. Let's have a quick look. And I think I have already showcased these uh, this armor. This is something I designed. Cam. And most of you who are in the Divide at Empera Discord would know Cam. Cam is mainly in charge of most of the Hellenic factions as well as the Nomadic factions. And he requests me. So basically how it works is the Divide at Empera team does uh, pretty much all the research. And then they create a request. And uh, hmm, 
This is interesting. Uh, let's go ahead and quickly redeploy our army. So that we don't get flanked over here. And we can run our army now. So basically what it does is that people who are in charge of certain factions who do, uh, you know, the the VMDs or what do you call it, the skins for each of the units for those factions, they pretty much ask me to design assets for them. And so I actually, my main task apart from of course creating the unit cards for Dividate Impera is to create uh, assets like the armor piece you see over here. So of course they give me uh, some sort of inspirational source uh, from of course you know history books and so forth and uh, I try my level best to match that up and I'm actually looking forward to uh, the Saka update in the 1.32 uh, beta and the reason being is that the I, I know what I have designed for the Saka and they are gonna be so lit they are gonna be like the Pergamon of the East uh, really gonna be an amazing amazing faction because they're just so beautifully done and uh, the Saka was actually uh, you know uh, Caesar Hazar um, or Zar <laughs> rather Hazar keep calling it Caesar he was actually quite good I'm one of the main uh, artists yes for I think I am as of now I'm perhaps the only artist with Divide Tempera Maybe, and uh, I shouldn't say the only artist, I mean Jake also does some artwork, he does a bit of minor artwork, but he is otherwise held up with his own project, and if you guys haven't checked that out, I don't know if it's released as of yet, but he is working on a, uh, you know, a pre, a very early Roman Republic, Rise of the Republic campaign for Rome, and it's pretty massive, and uh, you know, while I'm all for it, uh, you know, unfortunately what happens with these extremely massive mods, especially when you're alone and you don't have a lot of support, is that, uh, you know, it's almost, you never get to see it release. So, you know, I really wish that, uh, you know, he gets some support. And I would like to support him personally if I could, but of course I am otherwise very occupied with Divide et Impera modding, so... Go ahead, move our cavalry behind. We wanna, we wanna actually deal with this enemy Javcav. They are really annoying. I really don't like Javcav. And uh, Javcav, the best thing you can do is actually use archers to deal with them. Go ahead. Okay, meanwhile, select our entire front line. Move them up a little bit more. Keep marching. I'm gonna move our cavalry. Oh yeah, you charging at me? Okay, it's your funeral. Meanwhile, our archers can focus on another jab calf. Go ahead, hit that calf. Is it DEI compatible? I don't think it's DEI compatible. I think it's a it's a mod on its own. It's absolutely a mod on its own. So it, it has nothing to do with uh, Divide at Impera. So. Wow, the enemy is in utter, complete disarray. They have no idea what to do. And this is why I actually like the 41 unit uh, sort of thing. Because um, the AI is a lot smarter. And let's have a quick look at the Javcav. Still up. Still roaming at large. And we are going to make sure we run with all of our units. Because want to quickly get into position so that we can begin the melee phase of this battle. Okay, we can move our elephants over here, get our cavalry over here, and I'm doing a lot of mistakes here. Although I haven't, uh, I have played the battle quite well so far. The mistake that I'm referring to is that I'm, I'm tending to zoom in a lot more because one of the feedbacks that I received is that hello from Greece, sir? Uh, Kalimera Petros, how are you? Or Kalispera right now, actually, because it is evening, I'm pretty sure, or at least afternoon in Greece. Let's go ahead, charge in with our elephants, charge in with the calf. Elephants, you're doing great. 
Hey, these guys have done well. Go ahead. Uh, group three elephants, I think you're with the Rome Fai, yeah? One of our units has used all its ammunition. Okay, wonderful. And uh, we can get our Galatian warriors up ahead as well. Pretty much done routing out that left flank of the enemy, or the enemy right flank rather. Let's quickly get our cavalry to charge at the backs over here. Get our elephants out of there. Okay, wonderful. These elephants are also done. Get them out, get them out. Move the cav behind. Keep moving the elephants. Get them out. <laughs> Meanwhile, this cab is done quite well. Okay, great. Get these elephants out of bed. Galatian swordsmen can now charge at the enemy. We hide those trees. And Jav Cav is actually super powerful in my opinion, so... Uh, I, I have started to use them as much as I can in my campaigns for whenever my campaigns allow me to and I would definitely recommend them to anyone. We're gonna move these elephants out of the way. Meanwhile over here we can move here. This Jav Cav is done I think for the most part. Use... Okay that's good. If you decide to charge into my pike wall that is fine by me. One of our units has used all its ammunition. If you decide to do that, I am not complaining. Move our cavalry in over here. Hey, there's something up with this cav. Okay, it's it's kind of bogged down over here. We need to support it with our elephants as quickly as we can. Go ahead, charge into the backs over here. Okay, get one cavalry to hit that unit, the other cavalry can hit the other unit. We're gonna spread out as much as we can over here in an attempt. Alright, and I don't really care about this Cappadocian Alliance uh, taking a bit of damage, and the reason being is it is a foreign population class, so it should be quite easy to replenish. Meanwhile, our elephants are gonna charge into the backs of these units. Do some pretty massive damage hopefully and uh, we can charge as well with these units and don't be afraid to charge into the backs of units anymore because of course as you all know right now expert charge defense is a thing of the past but definitely don't be worried to do that and elephants are starting to take some casualties over there so let's try to move them out keep them moving meanwhile a Galatian swordsman can come over here even with the Syrian elephants, I'm I'm not going to be too bothered about, you know, preserving preserving their units because again they do come from that foreign population class, so it is it is in my interest to use them as much as possible and preserve my own troops. Meanwhile this charge will be devastating. There's nothing the AI can do to withstand against it. All that remains is a light melee infantry unit and that unit won't last long. Well, let's have a quick look over here. This is a phalanx type unit. Which means... Okay, we gotta move our units out of there. You guys come in here. And that's because these guys uh, do have good... I'm guessing good bonus against elephants. 19. Yeah, that's pretty insane. Go ahead, hit these units. You can go here, hit here. Elephants can charge back into those units and with that it seems like the battle will be done but Let's just actually hunt down all of these guys because we do have a siege after this We're gonna have to take this settlement of Odesos So Yep, that's definitely something we want to do Go ahead charge at this unit. This unit is done. So go for here Okay, 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 okay. All right what do we want? We want to attack that unit over there. Alright. Our elephant's taking some... Some more damage. But I think they did quite well in this battle actually. Our Cappadocians, elephants, all doing quite well. Meanwhile, uh, just look at this. 
Galatian warrior. Crazy. 400 damage. 400, 350. So you're looking at a total of almost 800 between these two units. And that's just how powerful these Galatian chosen swordsmen are. Definitely, definitely worth it in my opinion to get these guys. And uh, I think we are done with routing out the enemy. So let's go ahead, quit the battle. It's a decisive victory. And just look at that. You know, we have killed 4,299 of the enemy units of which... 800 has come from just two of our Galatian swordsmen. Now, 800, uh, when you consider 4,200, uh, is about 20%. So, 20% of all the casualties that we have inflicted on the enemy came from just these two swordsmen. And that's just how powerful they are. Would definitely recommend. I mean, they even competed with our elephants. If you have a look at our elephants, elephants did 900 damage. Or 900 casualties, rather. Go ahead and slave. Thracians make for good slaves. And uh, easy auto resolve. Go ahead. Kick in the nuts. Take that out. Odesos, we are going to loot you. And we have wiped out yet another faction. Go ahead, repair the buildings. Actually, dismantle this one. And uh, you can repair this. So mind that. Perfect. Well, we can keep moving our spy towards Bella. Move our other spy down here. Keep moving our dignitaries. We really want to get rid of that unit. Hmm. Okay. What I want to do is maybe, maybe we can Legion B, I think. Let's have a look at all of the legions we have so far, just rearrange them. Okay, I already have D, so it should be E rather. Uh, Legion E. What should we do? Alas, okay. Right, so we have Macedonia, Legion D, Macedonia. What the hell? Okay, this guy. Ow. What's going on? <laughs> Why do you have tax rate modifiers? Okay, this is confusing a little bit. Let's uh, go ahead, rename him Hegemon. Because he is going to be a Hegemon. Meanwhile, we can rename this Legion D in Macedonia. Alright, perfect. With that... Gonna wait a turn over here, move back towards Antia, get some of that replenishment going. The population is looking quite decent in Antia. Let's go ahead, upgrade the settlements quickly, have a quick look at all of our settlements. Uh, over here, we can upgrade some of these to get some more food. That should be the goal eventually. Since I'm making a decent amount right now, and Bithynia's Pontus is only making 6,200, so there's no point. What I'm going to do is now specialize this province to make food. And uh, with two provinces dedicated to food generation, we should be quite fine for food, well, as far as food is concerned, for the rest of the campaign. Anticapeons looking good. Uh, meanwhile, Aphasis also looking good. Um, Alicia Cappadocia is looking good. Asia, of course, as always looking good. And uh, what we need here is we really need some population class up and running. Because I have no idea what's going on over here in the heartland of Macedonia. If they have another army, we could be in trouble. Uh, however, we're going to have to see how we can get that. Meanwhile, we're slowly building up Legion uh, C Asia. And hopefully when that's done, we should be able to support. Let's not forget to use some of our characters to improve not only their loyalty, but the public order. With that, we can go ahead and end the turn. Green Ranger, I've been playing as Solani and learning the mod right now. What's the best tactic for Roman faction in your opinion? I'm using Double Ryan right now to mimic the Roman Legionary. That's actually a very historical way to play it. And I like playing historically as the Roman, um, as the Romans, as you can see in my Let's Play Roma series. Um, I... I haven't yet reached any uh, of the Marian reforms just as yet. So I am playing with, of course, the Poly Polybian uh, Legion. But what I would recommend Green Ranger um, is that you actually um, 
you know create an even ratio of uh, auxilia and of course uh, wow we can see Solani is really pushing and they are they have invaded Africa really anyways back to your question Green Ranger you want to um, you want to balance out your armies you want to have uh, as many auxiliaries and you can have I think my army composition which I would recommend is one eagle cohort two vet veteran legionaries so you have three units coming from your second class population then you have six regular legionaries so you have a total of nine legionaries uh, or you could have uh, not six you could have another um, let's say you can get two veterans or three veteran legionaries since you want to play with the double line I would recommend having four, four cohorts so you have four regular cohorts three uh, veteran cohorts one eagle cohort and there you have eight units plus one general that makes it nine so you are left with 11 more units to choose from out of which I would recommend four cavalry units uh, again auxiliary cavalry so with nine plus four that's 13 you have another seven with seven I would recommend uh, would recommend four spearmen protect your flanks and uh, again with that double line formation so you have two on each uh, side but in that double line formation so you have a uh, four spearmen again auxiliary spearmen and uh, then you want to focus on perhaps uh, getting uh, you have three more units and i would recommend uh, using those three units as uh, sort of uh, maybe missile troops maybe get one archer and a couple of uh, you know javelin type units i find javelin type units to be extremely useful now and i think it was actually andrew fish who recommended it to me initially and i used to not play as javelin units because i was like ah, they were not that great however you know i stand corrected they can be quite good if used right all right meanwhile our army is going to chill over here wait a little bit see what's going on move down a spicy the situation over here okay Everything seems to be quite undefended, which is what we want. Is Who is in charge of this army? It doesn't seem like anyone worthy of mention. And then we can have a look at the map. And one of the reasons I actually created the defensive alliance with the military uh, access is to kind of get a, a look at what's going on with the Solani. It looks like the Solani is pretty much taken over the entirety of Italia and is now beginning to conquer out Africa so things are not looking good for the Mariani and they don't even have an army in the region meanwhile with uh, Lipki by LPQY Selman has no garrison which means it could soon fall to the Garama faction who we are at war with I am here. and they won't piece us out Let's have a quick look at our diplomacy if we can get some Greetings, trade agreements friend. going. Greetings. We can. Will you have wine? Fine olives? Payment. Or agreeable talk? No, you are going to pay me, actually. You pay me a lot, so let's actually get a lot more payment. That's quite good for us. Wonderful. You might even go with the non-aggression. Pay me for that. Of such worthy people. Moderate. That's great. What about military access? That's moderate. So I don't want the military access just yet. Hey, okay. Numidia, meanwhile. Welcome, friend. Welcome. You are also going to pay me quite significantly. That's good. I'm liking this. Make the most of the Mariani factions. So that, so that I have a bit of uh, cash injection to, you know, to kickstart my economy. My economy is looking pretty good, so I'm not too concerned. But it can get better, of course, when you get so much we cash. And we should have quite a lot of cash over here. Callisto Bogii. Trade. No, you're not interested. Kribali. Trade. You're on pretty high, so I'm happy with that. Plus, you are a satrapy to this courtesy. So, definitely don't want to be fighting this courtesy. While the Vivishi, you're moderate. Take that. Callisto Bogii. And I can accept will most likely be the next target. Be the Hake, come on. The Granis. Alright, you're not interested. Just like that, as you can see, we have gotten 35,000. Mitty137, yes, I am so happy you have made it and uh, welcome to the stream. Uh, how are you doing? Hope everything is great. 
Georgi uh, Mik- Mikhailkov. Hi- Hello there, summary. Yes, uh, <laughs> general summary. Hello there. Uh, M- I'm going to say Mikhailkov, I think. I wish I... I hope I'm pronouncing it right. Mihalkov, maybe Mihalkov. It's a nice name. I really like, uh, you know, uh, names from that region. It's total badass. Uh, the Eastern European, I'm guessing. Um, however, with that, uh, I think we can perhaps just use our characters to further improve the public order. I think Bithynia Pontus is in need. And still this faction is around, still surviving, still kicking. It seems like Sulla is actually completely focusing on the Mariani and it's completely neglecting us. Uh, pretty much allowing us to easily conquer, uh, you know, easily conquer our way over here. Meanwhile, Legion, uh, Legion D. Macedonica, you can start building up. What we want from you. We want a couple of these guys. Get a couple of those guys. Okay, that's good. Get a couple of chariots as well. Two of these guys. Two of these guys. Next up, you want two archers. And uh, Cappadocian lancers. Uh, Cappadocian lancers, we can not get the mercenaries. However, I do believe we will be able to get, once this building levels up, we'll be able to get the AOR version over here. So that is pretty good. Alright. I think we can go ahead in the turn. Have a quick look at the chat. You're pronouncing it's great. Actually, didn't expect it. <laughs> thank you, thank you. I try my best. I actually like... Um, I like, uh, you know, to study about different cultures and, and all of that. I like uh, learning about different languages myself. I try to pronounce it uh, as best as I can. And actually, there was a, um, a Hellenic guy, I guess it was Petros, maybe. Was it you, Petros? And uh, he basically told me that the way I pronounce Perioikoi is is wrong, apparently. Um, apparently, uh, anything with the alphabet O-I is pronounced as an E, so it should actually be Periki. But I have a, I have a doubt about that, because Homoyoi is also spelt in the same way. So is it Homi? I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, if there are any Greek people in the chat, please let me know. How do I pronounce homoioi? Is it homoioi or is it homo homi? <laughs> I don't know. Homi doesn't sound right. Periki does, however, sound sort of kind of right. Defensive Alliance Numidia. Nope. Oof. Tala is absolutely tearing it into the into the Mariani. And uh Okay, we have almost fully leveled up uh replenished over here, so that's good. Well uh here Petna can go ahead get that commercial settlement for you over there. Uh hey. Alright, we wanna level that up. What's going on over here? This is Syria. Hey. Side. We, we might have a lot of uh, piracy in, uh, or piracy in the Carpathian Sea. It seems we don't actually, which is uh, not too bad because of course we have the port of Rhodos which counters piracy. So that's great. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Meanwhile, at the Quick look at the Tolista bogey. Wow, they are pretty, pretty stacked. And it's not going to be easy to counter them. However, we do have another army that is almost completed its recruitment. By almost, I mean we are going to transfer over two of those archers over there. And now. Just wondering what are the other two units I actually get. We get this, we get that. Yes, we are missing. We want to stop recruiting these guys. And we can actually transfer over these two guys. And here we have a full stack in Legion. The Asia. 
That's good. And now we can continue to recruit up. These guys come from the Katoi Koi. Oh, okay, we have a, quite a lot of Katoi Koi, really. That's pretty good. One, two, one, two. Perfect. And we need four Cappadocian Lancers. And, of course, let's not forget those Thorax Spearmen. There we go. Perfect. We are almost going to have our four full stacks, which is great. Which means after that, we should pretty much steamroll the Solani. Let's go ahead quickly, see if we can improve the public order. Can improve it in Thracia. Go ahead, keep improving that. Uh, meanwhile, let's have a quick look. In about three to four turns, we should have Hellenic as a major culture in Thracia, which is good news, of course. And a quick look at the chat for now. George C. Omi in today's Greek. Although the way you say it is closer to the ancient Greek pronunciation. So I guess I am uh, pronouncing it right. I guess homoioi is uh, the ancient way of pronouncing it. Uh, which I'm guessing is... Uh, uh, oi. Okay, oi in Attic Greek. I guess uh, the Greek of the time would probably be Biblical Greek, right? Or uh, what they call it as uh, a coin, uh, koinoin or something like that, I think. <laughs> koinon, koinon, I think, yeah, koinon or something like that. Green Ranger, my build is 10 legionaries, mixed variants, uh, 5 cavalry including general, okay. 5 skirmishes of auxiliary, depending on the situation my idea is to create a combined armed force on fast pace pincer uh, move uh yeah definitely that's the that's also a very good way of uh, running rome of course i personally i like to you know keep that ratio a bit more closer to 50 50. Uh, however there's no set, uh, fast rule but of course having those auxiliary spearmen are quite uh, important Alright, so uh, we have leveled up over here with Mithridates and uh, of course I think I have covered it in my previous live stream that I wouldn't typically get the um, experienced archer anymore because of course I have discussed it with Q Sertorius and it's not that ideal considering only two of my units benefit from it. So I would actually try to replace that with something else, however for now what we can focus on Get that extra morale and the movement speed, I think, would be the best way to go about things. So let's go ahead, get that morale movement speed so that we don't have to think about it anymore. Meanwhile, Legion 2 Phosphorus has leveled up as well. Army upkeep is going to be quite phenomenal. Unfortunately, we have to keep moving down this line. We don't have much of a choice over there since we have already selected that. And... Uh, Alright, things are looking good over here. Right. Eventually, we want to attack... Uh, we want to attack Pulpadeva. However, I have no clue as to how to go about doing that. For now, we have to just kind of wait, unfortunately. The double pincer move that you guys uh, decided has actually slowed down the campaign a fair bit. But I am not complaining. It is the... I believe in democracy. I love the Republic, so definitely... And, uh, all right, uh, go ahead, get this. Okay, food-wise, we're looking quite good. I uh, want to upgrade these buildings so that it, uh, we can level up in Syria a lot faster. And with that, we can perhaps go ahead and end the turn, but very quick look over here. 1,400. We're not really doing any politics in this campaign, and I think that's a little bit intentional. Uh, the reason being is I don't really care. Politics is not a big issue in this campaign. However, let's have a look at the chat. George C. Great work on everything you have done in DEI. By the way, summary credit where credit is due. Thank you. Thank you so much, man. Like, I absolutely love, uh, you know, modding. And I'm so happy that I have gotten into modding. And a full credit actually goes to Sergeant Meme Suraj. A very close friend of mine in the modding community. He's the guy who actually taught me everything I need to know. One wise man said, I love democracy. <laughs> Enough. 
I was actually trying to do the whole Emperor Palpatine thing. Uh, I was like, I love democracy. I love the Republic. It's a very popular meme for those of you who know Star Wars. What are my top three favorite factions? Glad you asked. Uh, John C, I actually like Rome. Rome is uh, one of my f one of my favorite factions, and um, I would say second, second up. It's so hard, you know, actually to have favorite factions uh, apart from Rome, of course, because the game has so many unique factions. But top three, very difficult. I would say, perhaps Seleucids would be second, and maybe third would probably be uh, the Morians for sure. Maybe even Morians at second. You know, uh, of course, there is going to be a little bit of a bias towards the Morians, considering that's where I come from. All right, let's go ahead over here. Okay. Uh, yeah, we need one more of those guys for sure. All right. Perfect. Meanwhile, we're slowly making... Yeah, I have no idea where... <laughs> Move our spy. Deploy him. I have no idea where that second army went. That's a little bit concerning, but have a look quickly over here to see if we have full garrison over here, because our Greek garrisons are so... Okay, there we go. It's right here underneath... Right underneath my nose. Okay. All right, all right, all right. Perfect. We have increased in rank as well. So let's go ahead, upgrade our governor generals. Get some more tax rate. Tax rate is important. So let's have a quick look at our province, actually. And, uh... Province-wise, our empire maintenance is pretty significant, so we want to reduce that as much as we can. So let's go down this tree, get that empire maintenance reduction. Um, maybe the trade tariffs is fine. Army upkeep is also really good. Let's go ahead and give you that army upkeep. Another character has leveled up. It's actually a dignitary. Get that extra cultural conversion. As well as empire maintenance. Focus on empire maintenance for now. And uh, yes, of course, still uh, this army is outside over there. Ooh, attacking it would be quite difficult, really. I could just, you know, rock up as close to Athenae and uh, just stay in a defensive formation. You know what? I'm actually going to try to break the deadlock against all odds. Stay in defensive formation, entice the Romans to attack me. Have this uh, fort, fort to our advantage and, uh, you know, be able to defeat a vastly superior enemy. Go ahead, end the turn, have a quick look at the chat uh, from Georgi Mikhalkov. Uh, Mikhalkov, uh, what do you think about the Etruscans? It's a shame DAI's time period doesn't allow them to be incorporated. Actually, I know very little about the Etruscans, to be honest, and I, I hear so much about them and so many people are really... Uh, appreciate their culture and of course they are sort of kind of like you know in a way sort of responsible for roman culture as well i mean they heavily influenced each other so uh, for sure and i think uh, rome's original kings were actually etruscans right the ones that got overthrown before the republic uh, you know came to being I believe what was it septimus or something like that Okay, and the Sulani has decided not to attack me, so that's uh, completely smart on their on their part. Well played, well played indeed. Refuse intimidating the opposition. Go ahead, upgrade these buildings. Okay, we have Hellenic culture over here, finally. Lord. Our path is blocked. We fight for you, my lord. 
I'm gonna move my army over here. Move this army over here. Okay. And we're gonna attack them in the next turn. I'm gonna show you some really interesting ways of attacking an enemy. So, uh, meanwhile, let's go ahead and select this. Couple of this. Perfect. We have a bit of a treasury so we can see what we can do with it. And uh, this hegemon over here can be hegemon E. A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. Okay. Barta. Go ahead. My Lord. Meanwhile, we can move uh, this army. It only needs its Cappadocian Lancer. So we can move this army towards there to get those Cappadocian Lancers. We could get the mercenary ones. And I am inclined to do so. Since we do have access to three of them. So might as well get the mercenary ones. Uh... And of course, we can even upgrade over here. Is this to four I? I think we had these uh, these cavalry unit. Um, let's go ahead, build up over here. Have leveled up uh, this building. I'm gonna go ahead, build uh, that. I'm gonna build an outpost or a colony because that gives extra growth rate, and growth rate is what we need. To expand these provinces as quickly as we can. Quick look at our diplomacy. Will the Hake actually in get into a trade agreement with us? And it doesn't seem like they are interested in doing so. Alright, let's quickly end the turn. And I'm going to create the first poll of this episode. It has been one hour. So let's go ahead and create a poll. And what I'm going to do is actually going to ask. What should be the direction of this campaign? What should be the direction of this campaign okay expand west annihilate all romans that's going to be option one option two liberate or conquer save the greeks okay save the greeks and form Save the Greeks, go east, like Alexander. I can't really type Alexander, so I'm just going to type Alex. And with that, you don't need another option. Okay. Uh, close this option, ask the community. Okay, go ahead, vote down below, and let me know what you want me to do. Whether you want me to... Um, Go ahead and chase uh, the Romans to the end of the earth. Or you want me to... An error occurred. Why am I not able to create a poll quickly? Alright. Back to the next turn. Let me create that poll again. Sorry, just bear with me. What should be the future direction of this campaign? Annihilate all Romans. Form Alexander's empire. Save Greek. Ah, uh, come on. No, don't tell me I've done the same mistake. Ah, oh, jeez. Okay. Uh, start a poll. Should be the future of this campaign. We're going to try it a third time. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Annihilate Rome. Alexander's Empire. Save Greece. Empire. And save Greece. Ask the community. Okay, it's not working for some reason. Anyways, uh, well, I will create a poll separately later. However, back to the campaign. Let's go ahead and uh, declare war over here. This guy will retreat. Which should mean I have an easy auto resolve over here. So let's go ahead auto resolve this or maybe even fight this so that we can get a look at our chariots. 
And uh, you know what? I'm just going to auto resolve it. There's going to be a lot more battles to come. And uh, go ahead and slave this guy. Mithridates over here can go in the fortified stance. Meanwhile, you can. Uh... Alright, perfect. Move you up here. Can you get another Cappadocian? Perfect. This is exactly what we wanted. We wanted another Cappadocian Lancer. Now we can break the deadlock over here in Athens. Gotta move these guys. You know what? Maybe we should just push towards Thracia with this army as well. Perfect. And we are looking quite good in terms of economy. As you can see, 27,000 denarii. And we are going to make a significantly lot more once all of these buildings have a completed building up. And since we are making a decent amount of money, we could eventually lower our taxes, but we're going to have to wait for now. And uh, let's go ahead, end the turn. But before that, have a quick look at our politics. Atlos, um, hmm. you've created a new Cappadocian faction, which I don't mind because you do like barbarians. You have positive traits, so I am pretty happy with that. Stay that way, please. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and end the turn. But before that, see if we can improve the public order. We can in Hellas, so let's uh, do that. Prioritize the public order in Hellas. Go ahead and end the turn. Ryan Neely, summary. What is your favorite AOR or AUX unit? You're talking about a Roman faction auxiliary units? Because when you say auxiliary units, uh, you mean uh, Roman auxiliaries. My favorite Roman auxiliaries. That's interesting. I actually like all Roman auxiliaries, but my favorite would have to be the uh, Batavian uh, or Batavian cavalry. Uh, they are my favorite uh, Roman auxiliary unit. My favorite AOR unit uh, is actually uh, the Agrianian uh, cell swords. And thank you for asking me that question, actually, because I haven't really got them in this campaign, and I should. I should show you how insane those guys can be, but although in, uh, you know, in all fairness, the Galatian Chosen Swordsmen have been doing quite well. They even got like 800 kills in, uh, in one battle, and, uh, you know, 850, uh, sorry, 750 kills, almost 800, which is pretty insane for a unit. Uh, or a melee unit, really. And of course, the uh, Solani busy conquering the entirety of Africa, as you can see over here. Pretty much gotten uh, the western half of Africa. And you know what? Uh, DI should actually rename uh, these uh, settlements to more Romanesque uh, names. More Roman-appropriate names. I have no idea why this guy didn't replenish. I'm gonna put him in there. Meanwhile, you're going to come here. Why didn't you replenish? You have enough... You have more than enough uh, population to replenish. But you are not interested in replenishing. Meanwhile, a spy has leveled up. So let's go ahead, get some of those abilities for the spy. Nothing much else is happening over here. Could marry off this character. And a quick look at where he is. He might be... Yes, he is the Hegemon of Rhodos. Alright, alright. Go ahead. Build up that building over there. Land. Gonna take a bit more time to replenish our armies over here. Alright, let's end the turn. Good old Agrianian. Nothing beats them. They are really, really powerful, man. I love them. I think they are so underrated. They are hidden gem. And uh, people don't really realize how powerful they are until they actually use them. And they are to be used as flanking troops, they're not frontline troops. Use them as flanking troops, use them to capture the walls of a walled settlement. They are incredibly powerful. They are not like really tanky, so they can't really, and by tanky I mean they cannot take a lot of punishment. However, they can take a lot more punishment than Rome Fire Eye Warriors, so... There's that. They are a lot more defensive like that. But what they can do is they can dish out some serious punishment. And uh, I would definitely recommend the Agrianian. The and, uh, okay, they want a peace agreement. I am not interested in peace. 
I want to take out, uh, want to take out Pulpudeva and uh, pretty much get uh, access to Macedonia. Alright. Defensive alliance, no Numidia. I'm not interested in any defensive alliance with you. Hey, it's spring. Uh, armies are slowly replenishing. Ooh, what do we have here? We have these guys that are outside. Ready for orders. At your command. Poseidon, guide me. Ready for battle. Fortunately, I will not be able to attack them. What we can do is we can just form up like this. Go ahead, attack that unit. It's gonna be a pretty easy auto resolve. Gonna quick save over here. Okay, get back. We're gonna pull these guys behind. And uh, what's the auto resolve look like over here? It's not too good. It's brick victory, so I don't want that auto resolve. Instead, what I want to do is perhaps even move. This army will take five turns to replenish. That's pretty significant. It's pretty long time, really. I don't really like that. And uh, I can get the public order here as well. Some of characters have leveled up. And uh, we want that extra tax rate, extra tax rate, extra empire maintenance. Perfect. And uh, we'll slowly start to see... Asia pull away, start to make a lot more money, which is what we want. Okay. Right. What's going on over here, meanwhile? And also level up Sparta. We're very close to getting a Hellenic culture over here as well, so we should actually just move our dignitaries towards, towards Hellas. While we're waiting, we might as well uh, you know, get some of the, that sweet population class that we need from Athens. We're gonna go ahead and end the turn. And perhaps get the Agrianians. Oh man, poor Salah. It look, uh, poor uh, Marius, uh, actually. It looks like Salah is actually... Kind of like Rome is in uh, the base grand campaign. They just have some sort of auto resolve bonus by the looks of it. The end turns are taking a bit longer now, um, but that's fine. I mean, that is understandable considering, of course, factions are getting larger, there's a lot more going on, but uh, it's pretty, pretty respectable end turns, I'm not complaining. Okay, keep moving our dignitaries across. You have to convert, have to, have to, have to convert the province before I go ahead and take it out. Meanwhile, over here, I could have actually built some more, some more siege equipment. However, I didn't do that. It's, it's never too late. So let's go ahead and do that for now. And we are soon going to get a lot of money from Asia. I'm actually excited for it. Uh, just to show you how powerful armies can get. Meanwhile, we have to be a little bit careful of the east over here. So let's go ahead and improve uh, the provinces over here. So that, you know, it won't be... It's basically going to be these two regions, Samosata and Tapsakos, that is the most vulnerable. Antiochia is a lot more easily defendable. 
But if we can get at least a garrison of 20 in both of these settlements, then they should be quite easily defendable against any Armenian stacks. Greek garrisons are pretty overpowered, if you ask me. They're really good at defending, so uh, if you really don't have armies to protect a particular frontier, what I would recommend is build buildings that will improve your Greek garrisons. Because Greek garrisons actually have hoplite units, and hoplite units are really good at holding the line. And if you have a, just a couple of cavalry units, a uh, unwalled settlement is very easy to defend because, you know, the enemy pretty much gets trapped in a in a narrow street and then you can pretty much uh, rear charge them, cycle rear charge them with your cavalry. So you want to basically uh, go ahead and do that as much as you can, possibly can. And of course now the Egyptians are getting into the fray starting to attack and they are pretty massive actually they have a lot of armies five armies over here however none of them seem to be interested in actual conquest and all of them seem to be interested in rather you know just being content with sacking settlements and i think that has to do with the script that is being used so that factions that are not rome don't expand unnecessarily in the campaign and of course they have also scripted Armenia to kind of grow to its uh, kind of original size. We're not going to get that military alliance with the Numidians. Okay, so here we are in the next turn. Character has leveled up. Let's go ahead. Get that for the spy. Going to get the success in all chance as well. Because maybe this guy would become the new faction leader. And if he does, then we have to, have to, have to kill him. However, the auto-resolve should be a lot better now. So let's go ahead, auto-resolve this one. Haven't lost any significant troops. Peacefully occupy the settlement because it is Hellenic culture. And uh, we're going to repurpose everything over here. Agrianians. Couldn't get AOR Agrianians, really. Let's actually do that. So we have a couple of Galatian warriors over here. Get rid of them. Instead, let's get the AOR Agrianians. Yeah, they're pretty nice. I like them. Uh, we have a Galatians here. We have another bunch of Galatians here. We can get some more of those AOR Agrianian Axemen. Now our spy, who we have improved the assassination chance, is going to have a 56% of assassination. By assassinating the last character, you wipe out the faction. And uh, let's go ahead. We need to build this. But the reason we can't build it is because we don't have access to cavalry. And uh, so we can't really build that. Let's go ahead and build this instead. Fantastic. And over here, quick look at... Yes, okay, I'm happy with that. Trapezos is our next vulnerable province. And uh, we have just 12. Food-wise are looking good, so I don't want to improve the food any further. What I want to focus on is trying to link up with my armies as quickly as I can, so that I can continue my conquest over here. And uh, let's go ahead upgrade our army traditions as well. Perfect. And with that, I think we are done with the turn. We can have a quick look at politics. Everything seems to be fine. We can use uh, one of the characters to further improve the public order in the Bosphorus. Keep that public order positive. We are making it about 10,000 per turn, but very soon we should be able to make a lot more than that, especially if we owned uh, the entirety of the province of Hellas because Hellas is also quite powerful. It's the weakest Estia province and the only reason it's the weakest Estia province is because it actually has only three regions in the province. It has Athens, Sparta and Hieropetna but all three of these uh, all three of these regions actually have a special capital. So uh, special capitals actually give uh, several bonuses that are not there with regular generic capitals like even asia doesn't have a special capital uh, pergamon is not considered a special capital alexandria in egypt however is considered a special capital of course roma is considered a special capital then you have uh, carthago 
or Katadasht. You have a Massalia. So these are some of the uh, special capitals. Hi, Summary. I just joined the video. What's the starting point from your faction? What's the starting point from your faction? Firstly, welcome, welcome, Shepard. Glad to have you with us. What is the starting point? I did not understand the question, actually. What do you mean the starting point from your faction? Well, I think we actually start, if you're asking how we started, well, this is the Mithridatic uh, campaign, which is part of the new Divide Tempera Mithridatic Wars campaign. We started out pretty much owning uh, this much or this many settlements. We have expanded into Asia, uh, uh, taken the entirety of the province of Syria, Galatia, Cappadocia. We are now expanding into Thrace in the north and in the south we are expanding into Hellas. So that's what's going on. Meanwhile, we have three armies over here already fully replenished and ready to go uh, and further push our offensive into into uh, into Macedonia now. So we want to move these guys back here. And all right, perfect. Meanwhile, we can get Mithridates himself to besiege Pella. Pella is a stronghold, so we are going to go ahead, build one of those tortoises and continue the siege. Meanwhile, we move our dignitaries across the river, get them into get them into uh, Hellas as quickly as possible. We want to keep improving our culture over there so that by the time we reach Hellas, uh, it will have a majority of Hellenic culture. Uh, we have completed a research? No. We can level up our and that's what we should focus on we should level up our temples that help deal with the public order meanwhile as you can see asia is slowly slowly increasing in about four turns we should be able to get the final settlement upgrade for our main settlement chain after which we should be making a lot of income from asia itself However, it doesn't look like there's much else to do in this turn. We can have a quick look at politics, see if there's anything we can do. There isn't. So we can go ahead and end the turn. And in the next turn, we are going to push the Romans out of uh, the Hellenic mainland. Starting with Pella, of course. And uh, then towards Larissa. And then we can link up at Athens. So Mithridates himself is trying to push as quickly as possible. Trying to push the offensive into Macedonia itself and if he succeeds then it should be quite easy thanks a lot I don't play Rome 2 for years I have a come I have come back now I start total war with Rome 1 yeah actually me too I actually started total war with Rome 1 back in the day and uh, it was actually a really good experience Rome 1 I have so many hours in that game I really like the game uh, the launch of Rome 2 was a disappointment. However, the state of the game right now is actually really good. I would definitely recommend getting it, especially for Divide Tempera. And uh, it's beautiful. Omar, how's it going, man? Long time, brother. I haven't seen you in a while. Uh, do s -tier settlements have a limit on wealth? s -tier settlements. Uh, what do you mean by s -tier settlements? Do you mean... Um... You mean Estia provinces? Estia provinces, uh, they don't have a limit really. I mean, I haven't really hit the limit. I mean, of course, technically, theoretically, they would have a limit. Everything kind of has a limit. But uh, realistically, are you able to hit it? Yeah, no, it's not, it's not possible in a campaign. I mean, you'd have to play for maybe 400 turns or 300 turns to get there. As you can see, like I'm... I'm Creating a lot of wealth from Asia. It can reach 150,000 denarii. Currently, it's only at 32,000 denarii. But as you can see, I have three three slots that I can build up. And of course, I have a lot of buildings that aren't completely like leveled up. So uh, there is a lot. I mean, respectfully, I think Asia in about 30 turns or 20 turns will be generating a lot of money. And you'll see that shortly. let's see we can attack the settlement now and uh, we could auto resolve however I don't want to auto resolve I want to play some battles that's what we're all here for 
And uh, let's go ahead and do that. Meanwhile, have a quick look at our provinces. There's nothing we can level up for now. However, we will get a slum here if you're not too careful. Let's dismantle some buildings. Build up some other buildings. Meanwhile, our food is looking quite decent. Food will start to go down, so let's actually improve our food buildings. Because what will happen eventually is that we are going to upgrade all of these main settlements. And as you can see, they consume food. So as of now, Pergamon consumes 8 food. It will consume 12 food. Mew. Uh, hi, Summary. Hope you're doing well today. Hi, Mew. Welcome. Welcome to the live stream. Glad to have you with us. How's it going? How have you been? And you are come at a very good time because we are actually going to fight our first siege of the episode. And uh, okay, our Galatian warriors have taken some casualties. And this is the beauty of, of course, uh, having elephants in your armies. They're just so good at siege battles, especially against factions like Rome. Because Rome actually has like a lot of melee and not spear infantry. So elephants will just have no threat whatsoever. You can just run about like crazy in the settlement. And uh, rain is pretty good actually for a siege. Uh, as an attacker because then they can't really you know hit your positions so let's go ahead and start the deployment quick look at this settlement now i don't want to attack this section of the wall i have the option of attacking over here this is pretty good actually this is a pretty open space so i'm actually going to attack over here let's go ahead move our units over here they have rightly selected the galatian uh, the Galatian swordsmen to be in charge of the ladders as I would like them to be while I get these guys over here group 6 as well melee mode okay you're gonna come here move group 6 finally over here group 3 okay and finally the elephants perfect let's go ahead and start good uh, thank you. I'm waiting on the 1.32 release. Do you know when? You're talking about the uh, beta? It's already released, my friend. It's already released. You can access it on the Steam Workshop or even on the Devere Tempera website. So you don't have to wait anymore, at least. And I would recommend you go ahead and download it and give it a go. It's a really really enjoyable. This uh, Mithridatic war is also particularly quite enjoyable. Meanwhile, what do we have over here? Okay, we have a bunch of melee troops. Let's go ahead, fast forward it. Have a look at the Romans. And as you can see, it's all swords units. The only like spear type units are actually um, cavalry units. We do have bunch of local militia but they are very light spear units so uh, nothing too fancy really meanwhile we can move our elephants into a, and i don't want to usually i try to go over here and take out this unit but of course they do have a ballista so i don't want my units to get in range of the ballista i'm just gonna just going to stay that way away from the ballista go ahead and move up our melee troops into position toggle on the melee mode actually there's no point it is raining so it's we can't really burn down the gates so there's a disadvantage to having gate uh, rain as well i mean the full release oh the full release in the words of the divide tempera team it will release when it releases honestly i would not know that there's still quite a lot of work to be done that's what i can tell you uh of course it is a the update is focusing on the nomadic factions and of the nomadic factions only one out of three have been updated so and pretty much imagine that we are just about 33 percent towards a full release so it should take about at least a month uh, by my estimate however don't hold my or don't take my word for it uh, it could take well over that time as well we are going to keep an ever watchful eye of this unit that's coming over here from the left. Don't want them to kind of hit us in the backs. 
Meanwhile, these spike units are not doing anything. We can just simply align them up over here. Might as well. To kind of prevent these units from hitting our flanks. And our tortoise has reached the walls. And I really like tortoise as a... As a siege equipment because it's actually really good. And uh, go ahead, toggle on that melee mode. Get our Pontic Late Infantry up over there before they break the walls. And when they break the walls, it kind of gets a little bit messed up. The walls are breached. Wonderful. I wish we could keep using the tortoise, but that would just be OP, man. You know, it, the ability to continuously use a tortoise would be just so OP. There is a glitch for it. I'm not fully aware of how it works, but I know there is a glitch for it in which you can pretty much use a tortoise uh, indefinitely. Meanwhile, we hey, keep moving our elephants into the city. We have a bunch of citizen militia. Those guys are a little bit dangerous. They're actually Greek, uh, Greek garrison units. But let's actually keep moving our elephants out of there because if they don't, then they could be in some trouble. We're keeping a close eye of what's going on over here. Gonna get these units to run. Meanwhile, Cappadocian Lancers can come here. Double tap four because four, as you know, is actually our group of elephants. When you double tap four, it will automatically take you to that unit. So that's one of the things you want to do is always double tap. Now, if I want, I can double tap three. And as you can see, already taken me to those uh, Cappadocian Lancers. Let's go ahead, move up our units. We can double tap back again on four. Have a quick look of what our elephants are up to. They are doing quite good, actually. Just keep moving them, because when elephants get bogged down, they start to take a little bit of extra casualties. Meanwhile, we can move our spearmen into the gap at group 3. Okay, move up our pikemen. <coughs> group 4. Keep moving the elephants. Keep, keep moving them. Have to keep moving elephants. Okay, let's see group 3. Alright, you can go ahead and charge here. You can charge this unit. You can charge here. You can charge here. Wonderful. After that, we can go back to group 4. Double tapping is really good. What's the key point in building the main province? Of, in building the main province for income? Uh, what's the key point in building? I would say, if you're asking me what's the most important thing to build for your provincial income, I would say the slave trader. Definitely. One of the most powerful buildings that a lot of people don't un realize is that that slave modifier can really, really, really change your economy. We're going to charge downhill with our elephants over here. Get a nice view of this. Elephants doing a fantastic job. Go ahead, keep charging at this cavalry. Hit the cavalry, hit these units as well. Losing decisively, that's exactly what we want to see. Wonderful. Meanwhile, double tap on three, see what's going on over here. This unit can keep attacking. Okay, wonderful. And of course, we want to move these guys up here. Group 4, we lost one elephant unit. Come keep charging into those swords unit. And once we charge into the swords unit, perhaps deal a little bit of casualties to them. We're going to leave them. And we're going to charge into these spike units. Or these uh, Italian swordsmen. We go back. Charge into the backs of these units. Downhill charge. Should be quite devastating for them. And since we have done that, we can actually move our spearmen to engage these units. Those guys should waver. Okay, wonderful. Move our Cappadocian lances out. No idea what these pikemen are doing over here. It doesn't make any sense. Meanwhile, our Cappadocians can turn around. Elephants have done their job. Go ahead. 
charge this unit over here. And get these units here. Try to capture that tower. Elephants, meanwhile, charge into the backs. Our general can come closer. Hey, we're getting rid of that unit. Meanwhile, Cappadocians can charge into this unit. Ike units now facing properly. This unit should be out of the battle with that rear charge. Massive rear charge over here. Wonderful. So we have dealt with uh, those units. Gonna quickly get these guys out of there. Move back our Cappadocian Lancers to the breach. We can come forward. Get our elephants out. Go ahead. Keep charging over there. General is close enough. And we're going to charge our elephants back into those units. To those cavalry units. Oof, massive man. Elephants are just so powerful at uh, sieges, man. They are so, so, so good. They just make sieges a lot easier. I would 100% always recommend elephants for sieges. Just look at the amount of kills these guys did. 800 kills, which is more than any of the other units have accomplished. However, with that, we have won the battle. So let's go ahead and conquer the settlement of uh, Ella. And as you can see, 800 out of 2,000 casualties is actually almost 50%. So you're looking at 50% of the kills actually came from your elephant units. And of course, swords units also do quite well, like these Galatian uh, chosen swordsmen did quite well. But uh, definitely elephants, man. They make sieges so easy. Really. Now, Green Ranger, I will explain to you. Since we are back in the campaign, I will actually explain to you. Let's go ahead first loot the settlement of Pella. And the reason we want to loot these settlements is because we actually want... Um, you know what, I uh, could just get a harbor over here. We actually want... We can repair this building. Okay. We actually want our slaves to be maxed out. And you will see right now... Okay, Asia is making 32,649 denarii. In the next turn, we will have access to our third level of uh, slave market. And you will see that income just spike up all right and the reason being is you have this slave modifier over here and that's what's countering your empire maintenance as you can see if you total this up and you don't need to do the math here what you can do is just mouse over on the bottom left corner and you can see the total provincial wealth is 11,862 denarii that is the summation of these four numbers which is basically the regional wealth of Pergamon, Ephesos, Rhodos, Pesinos the sum of that now, once you get that provincial wealth, you pretty much uh, multiply it with these modifiers. So you're looking at about about 20, a difference of 20. So let's say plus 20 plus 156. So that's 186. So you're looking at about three times, almost three times uh, an increase to your income. So as you can see, 11,000 denarii becomes almost three times, which is almost 33,000 denarii. So that's what's powerful about slave economy is that it can counter that and if i didn't have that then if i didn't have slaves over here what would end up happening is that this 32,000 would just simply be 20,000 so that's pretty significant considering uh the extra 10,000 is pretty much my almost my entire net income however that being said and done um yeah we are done for this turn we're gonna keep Ooh, we have a Roman army over here. That's interesting. I'm gonna keep moving our dignitaries down south. We don't really care. Keep pushing, keep pushing. Come into Athens. Deploy over there. Convert the province. And in about, I guess... In about maybe 10 turns or 5 turns, we should have the province completely converted. So that is good. Meanwhile, let's have a look over here. We have a decent amount of population. We have better population over here. So we're going to move this 
army towards this side put them on that patrol stance for that better population replenishment go ahead end the turn and you'll see it in the next turn your voice and explainings are good and enjoyable what mods you use o over dei so far i gave not much attention to it your games look nice need to pimp up my dinosaur P pc yeah definitely uh, i'm not going to join the war against egypt i'm sorry um what i would recommend for mods is to actually have a look at any of my series such as my parthian series let's play series or my morian let's play series uh, my roman let's play series is a very tailored towards the roman experience so i wouldn't recommend looking at that however if you hop onto any of my other series you can see the mods that i use it is a vast list of mods that i use however i recommend keeping the number of mods that you use below 30 because above 30 I, and actually when you use about 35 mods to be precise uh, the game bugs out because there is a limit to the number of mods that you can play as i played a campaign as rome and i didn't get 30k a turn until turn 100 y uh, you mean 30k net income uh, omar because 30k net income at turn 100 is pretty respectable but if you're talking about 30k uh, as a provincial income then uh, that it means you're doing something wrong because um latium should be able to get easily uh like close to 50k in in a in about that much amount of time uh, if you see my uh, roman let's play series uh, you will see that in about 100 turns i will uh, be generating about 50 to 60k in latium alone that's at least my experience of course we have completed some of our objectives so we are getting some extra money which is always good go ahead convert this I'm gonna build a temple over here have a look at the culture over here and this is a little bit dangerous because they could end up coming into Sparta is not what I want over Hmm, that's not good. This is actually not good. I am no one. Deal with this army. Meanwhile, this army is taking forever to replenish. Alright. Hmm, mm hmm. Larissa, what is your... S your garrison looks quite good, actually. I'm a little bit intimidated by that. I can assist you further. Definitely not intimidated by any garrison, but it looks quite good. And as you can see, we're already making about 3,000 denarii more. Just from improving that slave trader, as you can see. Uh, it's now jumped up to 74%. And if we loot, we will even increase that further. However, of course, we can't loot for now because I am waiting to replenish. And, uh, okay, what are we looking at over here? Fine, nothing much to do in this turn, but, you know, we have to be a little bit careful. I think the play is to... Oh, we're out of supplies. Oh, no. No, 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 no. Uh, you know what? All is not lost. And move uh, this army back towards Sparta. We do have a fleet over here with a supply ship. And we can supply this army via the sea. Well, let's get that supply ship over there. And as you can see, now we are being supplied by sea. So that's pretty good. That's, an, that's something for you guys who don't understand uh, about supply lines. And I'm... I intend to create such guides, you know, guides that explain supplies, guides that explain politics, guides that explain economics. However, I'm going to wait a little bit until I'm a little bit deeper in the Roman campaign so that I have some examples to show you. Like right now, I can show you, you know, uh, I can explain to you how I make my money in Asia. But as you can see, it's not optimum. Uh, so I pretty much need to play the entire campaign before I can create a guide. However, let's go ahead and end the turn. And we are in a position where we can recruit yet another army. It should not cost us that much. 
let's have a quick look at the chat uh, please at omar there's pretty uh, there's a pretty rad province guide on tw center for dei i can link it to you if you want i wonder which uh, which guide are you talking about mu i would uh, really like to see the link myself as well i'm very interested in seeing that Okay, I have no idea where that army went, and that army has gone towards Sparta, so... Yeah, once again, things not looking good. Over there. What we need to do is we need to, we need to pick up a defensive fight right now. We need to stay in... Uh, thankfully, we have elephants in that army, from what I remember. Which means we can pretty much stay in Sparta, fight it defensively, and uh, you know deal with the Romans. Because pretty much, I think in the next end turn, what the Romans are going to get up to is that they're gonna they're gonna do a pincer attack. One of the legions from Asia and the other legion from uh, Larissa, is, uh, sorry, not Asia, from Athens and from La Larissa are gonna attack me simultaneously. So I don't want to get caught out. Ptolemies have declared war upon me. How unfortunate. My dear Ptolemies. Okay. You don't want peace with me. That's fine. Okay, let's go ahead and put up our army in the settlement of Sparta. I'm gonna have our last stand over here in Sparta. And while our dignitaries can deploy over here. I'm gonna maintain this dignitary in Larissa. We keep converting the province of Larissa as well. Uh, shoot. What's going on here? Alright, we can move this army closer. It should be able to replenish. Meanwhile, a move... Hmm. Not entirely sure if this army can reach Pella. Because we, I'm not sure if I am within reinforcement range of Pella. We'll have to kind of wait for that. Meanwhile, we can move uh, this army over here. Get all of our armies into the fray. And as you can see, we are now making 19,000 per turn. Which is great. And uh, you're starting to see now Asia is starting to skyrocket. And in the next turn, you're going to get even more wealth. Even, even, even more wealth. And I'm just waiting to loot one settlement or to enslave some people. And then you will see the true power of... Uh... Well, over here, this Roman army should have low supplies. This foraging. So they should take attrition, but they are not. We have a good amount of income. So let's see if we can actually level up any of the buildings. And uh, what we want to do is... Definitely want to upgrade this building. And I believe there was one library. Definitely. Yes, go ahead. Keep upgrading that. You can be a uh, military wharf, I guess. Keep upgrading the settlements. Okay, you know what? I don't want to keep upgrading all of the settlements. I want to preserve some money. Because in the next turn, I will need all of it to upgrade all of these settlements as I can. Let's go ahead, end the turn. We have some characters that have a skilled up, so let's get that. More skills, in fact. Wonderful. Perfect. Hegemon Sparta has also leveled up. Get that extra tax rate. Extra commercial. As you can see, we should be making close to 38,000 denarii per turn. So you can see we started this episode with just making about, I believe, 25,000 denarii per turn. But now we have already reached 38,000. So it's going to keep increasing exponentially now. That's what happens eventually. Okay, let's have a look and see what the Solani are going to be up to. Are they going to... Wow! Wow! Oh, wow. Okay, it seems like we're gonna have a fight. It's uh, And I'm actually excited for this. Uh, it's, it looks like the Solani are not gonna give up, uh, you know, their Greek provinces as easily as I had anticipated. They have uh, pretty much moved back all of their stacks into Macedonia. 
and uh, we are finding ourselves a little bit surrounded in the Pelopides, but we are in a very defensible position, so we are not too threatened by it. And of course, we are moving up two legionaries, meanwhile, to deal with it. If we can take Larissa, then we have uh, pretty much... I think the play would be to take Larissa and Apollonia if we can. But taking out Larissa would also be a pretty pow powerful play. I mean, Pella is a choke point. So they can't get across it. And I will explain it in the... What's my favorite historical movie? Oh, that's tough, man. I really like a lot of historical movies, really. Uh, some of the historical movies... Um, I don't know. I like the Alexander movie. Uh, it was a bit dry for those who are not into history. But I definitely enjoyed the Alexander movie. Uh, meanwhile, let's just move our armies over here into Pella. Okay, wonderful. These guys should replenish soon enough. We're going to have a pretty massive battle over here against a Roman legionary. With the Roman garrison, so that's going to be very, very interesting. And we can go ahead and upgrade our settlement, so let's go ahead and do that. You can see we are making now 24,000 per turn. And even Hellas will suddenly jumpstart. You will see it. You will witness the power of, of my economy very, very soon. And as you can see, we are already making 42,000. It's crazy. It's going to get even crazier. So let's go ahead and uh, declare this or fight this, really. This guy is close enough, so we could attack with... Mithridates. He should lead it. We're going to move our other army as close as possible since we want our reinforcements to be perfectly positioned. Quick save over here. Hop into the battle. A big battle. Let's see. Historical. Favorite historical movie. I even like... Uh, I think it's uh, Master and Commander or something like that. I don't remember the name, but I, I did like it a lot. It was uh, Russell Crowe as a uh, as a not an admiral, but I think captain of one of the ships. Uh, pretty much during the Napoleon Napoleonic Wars. And so, very nice movie, actually. Very historically accurate is what I liked about it. When it comes to uh, historical movies, I like it when it's more historically accurate. Like, I don't like 300. Like, I mean, uh, uh, it's not bad, but I don't like it. Okay, let's go ahead and start. We are at a disadvantage. It is... Yeah, I mean, like, considering the terrain, we are at a disadvantage. If the Romans decide to run for the hills, we're going to find ourselves at a disadvantage. But however, let's go ahead and start the battle, regardless. And uh, I have created the timer. I don't know why. That's also going to put me at another disadvantage. You know, I get elephants in group 3, get chariots in group 4 get some of a Capadocian Lancers in group 5. Uh, get our Scythians. Where are Scythians? Alright, come on. Come on, come on, come on. We don't have a lot of time in this battle, unfortunately. If we want to get all of our pikemen into a position. Okay. And get all of our spearmen as well to position okay perfect then we want to get these guys on the right flank i'm just setting them out before i can group them because not all of them are yet in the battlefield these guys would be group six archers group two Agrianians. You get these guys over here. Wait. You are going to be group 7. Group 6. 3, come here. Hurry up. Group 4, you're going to come to this side. And uh, group 8. Group 9. And group 10. Ah, no, come on. Group 2. Okay. 1, 2, 3, 4. We're going to be into group 10. We're going to move you here. 
and the Galatians can probably come on the other side. Okay, fantastic. Group 6, form up real quick. Group 3, form up real quick. I really don't like that there's a timer. And I usually don't keep any timers. The reason there is a timer is because... Uh, okay, group 7. I want to push out over there. The reason I keep the timer is because, you know, when I was playing the Roman campaign... Uh, the settlement is glitched, sort of, kind of. We're going to run into position. Unfortunately, we have no choice but to run into position. Did you see the show Barbarians? Yeah, I actually saw that. That was also quite a nice show, actually. What I like about that show is uh, they actually use proper Latin. I mean, they try their best, of course, but it is one of the better versions of Latin that there is. And... Okay, it seems like the enemy is going to engage us. So let's quickly just form up our lines. Reform up our lines over here. Okay, that's good. And we're going to run into position. Get group 5. Where are chariots? The chariots are quite advanced. And group 6. Where is group 6? You're coming here. Group 5, you're coming here. Get our elephants around. Go ahead, deploy these guys in that defensive formation. Scythians. Oh, I forgot about the Scythians. Toggle on that guard mode. We already lost 8 minutes just from a pure maneuvering. It's, it is unfortunate. However, it is what it is. There's nothing much we can do about that. Go ahead and deploy our pikemen. Keep moving them up ahead. Hopefully, we can move these spearmen also up ahead. For some reason, they are not interested. So we are going to use the arrow keys. Keep moving them. And select the other two as well. Move them up ahead. Meanwhile, we are going to select all of these guys. Move them up ahead. Quick look at our entire battlefield. Get our Galatian swordsmen up there. Agrianians. Go ahead, charge with the elephants. Get our Cappadocian lancers as well. Into the fray. We have discovered the enemy's hidden units. Uphill battle, really. Don't really like having to fight an uphill battle, but... It is what it is. We're gonna have to just... Suck it up and fight it out. Why don't you extend your front line? So the reason I don't extend my front line, right? Okay, I'm going to pause here real quick. The reason I don't extend my front line and a lot of people, what they do is that they actually extend their front line. What happens is archers or any unit tend to attack just a single unit then. But when I keep it narrow like this, then my units are pretty much spread out. There's no... Because what happens with the AI is that they typically tend to blob. All right. They typically tend to blob, which means... You are going to have, uh, you know, issue with, you know, a couple of your frontline units not even being part of the battle. So, you definitely want to avoid that as much as possible. And the way you kind of can manage uh, your frontline not being flanked is by actually engaging in a sort of oblique order. You know, this is a really horrible battlefield as of now because, um, as you can see, we are clearly... You know, fighting uphill. Terrain-wise, we are actually struggling a little bit. I wouldn't say too much, but definitely uh, it's not perfect. Uh, it could be a lot better. Meanwhile, our elephants over here can charge into that cavalry unit. We are, we're dealing quite well with their cavalries for now. So, as far as that is concerned, things are looking quite good. But as you can see over here, our pikemen are going to continue to take a lot of damage. There's nothing we can do about that. Meanwhile, some of these cavalry units, they're going to try to make a move for my for my Agrianians. And I don't like that because Agrianians are not particularly powerful against cavalry units. However, they do get caught out. They're going to take a little bit of casualties. It is what it is. Meanwhile, our front lines have finally engaged. That is good. We can just charge into this unit. 
go ahead, keep keep moving forward. Elephants can charge over here. Agrianian Axemen bomb up. Wonderful. And now I'm gonna keep charging. And as you can see, some of our flanks have been hit, but that's fine. We are gonna focus on trying to outflank the enemy ourselves. Get group five and six over there. While well, the elephants are doing a very good job chasing down this unit. Move our Cappadocians around. So more or less a decent uh, front line. And now the Agrianians can kind of get into that flanking position. Move our elephants as well. Get them over here. They've done quite well. General can continue to chase down that unit. Meanwhile, our Cappadocians over here can try to hit those uh, spear units. Move our chariots. We never really got to see our chariots in this campaign as of yet. And we have a Praetorian Guard that we need to... We're gonna charge our elephants into it. Move our Agrianians behind. Well, our Scythians, where are you? Keep coming up forward. Okay, elephants charged, get the Agrianians as well into the fight. General has done good over here. What is this unit? Oh, it's another. We have two general units. I forgot about that. Okay, group five, you're done well. I'm gonna pull you out. Okay, meanwhile, let's quickly use our chariots now. And this is the way we use chariots. We're gonna form up group six over here. Oh, come on. Group five. Hurry up. Get you over here. Chariots, you can come back. Hit this unit. Group six. Come here. And let's have a quick look at the kills of our Agrianian units. Not yet there. However, it will get there better. We'll keep moving our chariots forward. We're gonna keep dragging our chariots. Keep dragging them. And they will cause quite a significant amount of damage as you can see over here they already begin to route these uh they're not very good units however you know it is quite good what we have achieved with these guys meanwhile what we can do is get our Cappadocians to keep attacking these archer units our chariots have done quite well group four uh, use our galatian swordsmen to charge into the flanks over here meanwhile all of our swordsmen can charge over here Quick look at our elephant units. They're looking quite good. Move out of there. Get our general all the way over here. Get our Agrianians to sort of flank this unit as well. And what we need to do is actually get our chariots around if we can. If we manage to do that, then... Um, then we can actually get a lot of kills over here by the looks of it. Okay, get our elephants, agri Indians, go ahead, charge over there. One of our units has used all its ammunition. Elephants can charge here. By the looks of it, we're gonna hide those trees because they're bothering me a little bit. Meanwhile, a cavalry can charge into these units. Did we lose a chariot? No, we do not. That was some pretty crafty maneuvering to avoid some of those traps. Meanwhile, over here, we can keep pushing up our units to support. And it's a couple of these units that are taking a bit of damage. Elephants have done quite well. We're going to move our elephants behind. Recharge. As well. Chariots. Our Galatian swordsmen are doing quite well. And as you can see, the Agrianians have already stacked up quite a lot of damage. Get our elephants to hit that unit. Chariots can come. Keep moving the chariots. And now we're going to keep moving the chariots. Just have a look at the kills that the chariots are going to do. Hi, Antonio. Welcome, welcome to the stream. One of our units has used all its look at that. Look at the chariots. Look at these chariots. Crazy. Chariots are just going to do insane. There we go. Boom. Easy victory. Chariots already started to rack up some extra kills. Go ahead. And uh, turn off our reshade for the for the battle, and turn on our campaign reshade. You can see a pretty decisive victory, 
very well fought. We have dealt with one of the Roman legions down in the south over there. And of course, why don't you extend the front line? Okay, I already answered that. I am out and start the game. It's your fault. You have one, a bow and a thumb more. All the best to you. Make love, not war. <laughs> Thank you. Hope you enjoy your campaign. Hi. Yes, Antonio, welcome. Glad to have you with us. Let's go ahead and take down Larissa. Wonderful. And we can also loot the settlement of Larissa. However, what I want to do is just peacefully occupy it this time. Reason being is when you peacefully occupy, you get just a little bit of population. As you can see over here, have a little bit of first class population, a little bit of second class and third class. And what that actually does is that actually helps you out a bit in, uh, in trying to, you know, replenish since we want to replenish really badly get this get the movement speed as well and, uh, these couple of armies can come back towards larissa so we definitely just want to support the settlement as much as we can and maybe in the next turn we could take out athens itself or we could isolate we could fight some of these armies but we'll see how that develops or how that goes and uh we definitely want to also sack a settlement and i think in the next turn we should have hellenic culture in athens as well so that's great news meanwhile a quick look at politics this faction is getting a bit disloyal we can use him to improve the public order and also get some food and go ahead and end the turn elk elk Lichi. Yeah, how about you do some alternate history stuff uh, and ally Parthia against Marius? That's interesting, actually. But ally Parthia against Marius? Uh, Parthia is not even fighting Marius, I think. I think what he mean to say is uh, Tigranes, uh, the Armenians, maybe. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I'm not too happy with the way the Armenians have treated us in this campaign so far. They have been pretty annoying. Alright, great news, great news with this army moving closer towards Sparta. It's going to find itself isolated very soon. Uh, because, because what I'm about to do is I'm actually about to attack Athens in the next turn if I can. And if I can do that, then pretty much this army is going to get stuck over here. I'm going to place another army down over here at the Straits. we'll see how that goes and of course i don't have to worry about the replenishment in athens because athens is going to be hellenic culture which means we should have quite a decent amount of population class in athens itself okay some children have been born and uh, haven't really okay let's go ahead besiege the settlement of athens oof and we are going to go ahead and attack this army is going to retreat what no way no way what is going on how are they three legions over here and i can't even retreat that's messed up man that's messed up lol what the hell? Hey, it seems I'm gonna have to, uh, you know, skip back a turn because obviously this was not the idea. I have no idea how they have three legions over here. What the hell is that all about? How the hell did they get three legions all stacked on one on top of the other, I'm guessing? But uh, yeah, let's go ahead and load the autosave because that's like, that's crazy. 
I mean, I would never take that battle. It's like absolutely not. It does not make any sense. I didn't even wait for the replenishment. I just went in ahead because I thought it would be an easy auto resolve. And uh, yeah, I don't like that. I absolutely don't like that. But uh, I think they're stacked one on top of the other, which is what's making this a little bit weird. You have a perfect voice for a history YouTube channel or video essay stuff in general. Thank you, man. Really appreciate the compliments. Uh, let's see. What do we have? Yeah, I can actually see that there are like a couple of units over here. That's so strange, man. That is absolutely bonkers. Uh, all right. Let's go ahead and do that in turn once again. And uh, we're going we're gonna to keep an eye out for that. Really. And unfortunately, we can't even like retreat. We don't even have the options of retreating over there. That's so weird. And if they actually have three armies over there, I have no idea as to why they haven't attacked Larissa. It makes uh, no sense whatsoever. I have a very hard time playing Greek factions because hoplites and planks and uh, pikes are inflexible and heavily rely on other units to deal the damage. I agree with you, Green Ranger, uh, but uh, hoplites and f uh, pike units are all about that hammer and anvil tactics. Uh, so definitely you want to be using them in that way if you're all about that maneuverability as per what you described your roman legionary is very 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 maneuverable and uh, actually uh, you would enjoy the a campaign as the aravachi if you haven't played them as you they're very mobile very quick moving uh, got really good units with good javelins good attack good stats they're not really elite units they don't have a lot of armor but it's a very, very interesting playthrough. Which is why when some people ask me what are my favorite factions, it's very hard to say because yes, the Seleucids are a good faction, but so so are the Arivachi, man, really. Like, they are not, of course, an S tier faction, but they're just so enjoyable because they are, have a completely different way of playing the Arivachi. You can't play the Arivachi as you would play the Seleucids. You know, it's completely different. Okay, I'm... Definitely not going to be making that mistake again. Instead, this army hasn't really replenished over here, so... Quickly go ahead. We are going to... Can I build... Yes, I can build a research building, and I'm not sure if I have gone ahead and done that. But if I haven't, I should. Probably should. And I haven't, so yeah, let's go ahead and actually build that one. Okay, so no idea as to what to do now with uh, these uh, multiple, crazy multiple number of stacks over here. And of course, what I would want to do is I would want to firstly get rid of the battle timer. Because if I am fighting a stack that's crazy like that, having a battle timer is, is going to be counterintuitive. Um, meanwhile... Uh, Meanwhile, we're going to have a problem or a situation over here in Sparta if we're not going to, you know, act quickly. And what I want to do, maybe, 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 this would be a good idea. Actually move. If I do that, these guys can come here. Like, I'm not sure what's exactly going on here, man. This is really confusing. What I can do is move these units back here. These guys are fully replenished, so... Get these guys up here. Wonderful. You can go into the settlement of Pella itself. Should be able to replenish now. And uh, yeah, that's good. Go ahead, get some of that empire maintenance from improving our scriptorium. Also improve all of our sanitation buildings. That is a priority because sanitation buildings give you empire maintenance reduction, which is so powerful as well. So uh, sanitation buildings coupled with the academia gives you a lot of empire maintenance reduction. So you definitely want to be stacking that up towards the mid game. 
as you can see your empire maintenance is going to be quite significant it's at 48 percent and if you can get that down to zero percent then this number will easily easily hit 50 or 60 even and uh, let's look at the number of turns we have so as you can see we are in turn 68 and uh, you can see we are already making 42,000. so definitely you can make a lot of money especially as rome now i have no idea how to deal with this uh situation over here definitely some sort of a bug but you know what we have a fleet over here which i can't really use unfortunately but don't we have oh it's a pontus okay uh strong ramming okay we need to okay getting this is not the play what we want is we want to get a dry dock so that we can build a more formidable navy and we are going to attack athens like this we're going to force all of them out into the sea really that's going to be the play and uh, that will have to wait until the next episode because it seems like we are out for time it has been two hours we have played uh, quite a lot we have achieved quite a lot rather in this uh, episode so far and, and things are looking quite good and of course another thing is uh, this building over here is also quite good for your slaves as you can see at level 4 it gives you uh, plus 60 percent wealth generated by slaves on minus 40 slave unrest in all provinces which is crazy right so that actually is quite a powerful building to have However, that being said and done, it seems like we are done for this episode. We are at the risk of a civil war, so let's go ahead and improve the public order as well as improve the loyalty of one of our faction members or our political parties. And by the looks of it, although we have Hellenism as the majority culture over here, unfortunately, we can't really attack Athens as of now but what we're gonna do is we are going to go ahead and build up that navy and I'm not gonna make you guys uh, wait to see that happen what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and do that in a couple of turns uh you know which is not part of the live stream maybe or actually I should just do it because it is a live stream so it's not a let's play series so yeah we'll go ahead and do that meanwhile over here I'm gonna send my spy up to the north yeah, 27k. That's just how powerful it is, Johnny Oak. It's gonna get even more insane, trust me. It's gonna get even more insane. Just wait till I conquer Athens. Because you see this number over here. That's happening with... Uh, I'm sorry. You see this number that's happening over here with Asia? That's gonna be... That's gonna be the situation in Hellas soon. And speaking of Hellas, can we get... Yes, we can. We can actually get a admiral as well so we should probably do that however that being said and done let's go ahead quickly save the game and uh, it's going to be pontus 4 because that's going to be our next episode and uh, with that i am going to go ahead and end the live stream and i thank each and every one of you gathered here today for joining me with this live stream for being active in the chat you guys make me so happy and uh, you know I really do all of this for you guys because uh, it's just fun I mean I do it for myself of course but it's just fun uh, you know being part of the community having a really good community members and good support and all of you have been extremely supportive of me especially with all of my polls and everything and uh, yes thank you thank you so much antonio i really do hope that we reach 1k subscribers too although i am not monetizing the channel i don't do this for the money i do this purely because i enjoy doing so so hopefully you guys are not getting a lot of advertisements um you know as far as life is concerned uh i am uh i would say that i am pretty uh privileged so uh, money is uh, you know is not an issue so definitely don't want to be doing this for money because when you add money into something you're passionate about uh, there are only two things that can happen you'd make a lot of money or two you'd stop to lose uh, interest in 
that activity so i don't want to lose interest in this activity i really enjoy streaming for you guys and uh, pumping out videos because of course i get a lot of love and support from you guys and that actually makes my day and uh, yes without any further ado i thank you all for watching the video hope you all enjoyed and if you like the video then like the video and don't forget to subscribe if you are interested for more green ranger yes uh, definitely you're most welcome that i answered all of your questions and uh, until we meet next time guys 